Sierra Rose, Gregory Bowers, Dasha Antibova, Kevin Mahoney, Nikolina Kosanovic, Jill Johnson, Stephanie Jockman, James Keith, Jack Dickens. Sunday, July 10th, 2016. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live. Welcome everyone, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us everyone. My name is Gregory Bowers and this is USF Housing Live, brought to you by Housing and Residential Education at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. How is our audience doing tonight? Yeah. All right. We're getting a lot of love. A lot of our Summer B students are here on campus. Thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. We've got a whole lot of show coming for you. And of course, we want you to ask us questions during the show because they're going to send them to me right here live on the set. We're going to answer you in real time. So as you meet our different experts, make sure to ask whatever questions might be in your head. Get them over to us on the set. We'll be happy to help you out. So we've got our first panel coming up in just a moment. But first, I want to make sure everyone here knows how to ask us a question. You do that in the live chat by logging into YouTube. We're going to roll that, and then we have our first installment of Best Places. More USF Housing Live coming your way right after this. If you have a YouTube account, please take this time to sign in so you can post questions during the show. Don't have a YouTube or Google account? Think again. Every USF student has a Google account. To get started, select Sign In. Next, enter your USF email address. Don't type in a password, just select Sign In. Then, you will be prompted with the USF NetID login screen. Type in your NetID and password, then click Sign In. Congratulations, you are now signed into YouTube with your Google account. Now that you are signed in, please, Make Rocky happy and subscribe. You can do this on our YouTube channel page or below the video player. Hi, I'm at Student Health Services where it's the best place to get treatment for that pesky cold. Camille's Cafe in the Morsani Center, where it's the best place on campus to grab a bite to eat. We're here at the Meadows, where it's the best place to frolic in the breeze. We're here at the Martin Luther King Plaza, where it's the best place to play trumpet. We're here at the beach of Castor, where it's the best place to enjoy the beautiful Florida weather. Where would Sierra go? All right, all right, all right. It is time to meet our panel. So let's uh, just start with Jillian Olson. Jillian Olson from Housing and Residential Education, everyone. Warm welcome for Jillian. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Also joining us is Peter Thorsett from Career Services. Peter, welcome. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for having us. And last but not least, Athena Bresak, who's representing our Common Read program. Athena, how are you doing this evening? I'm well. How are you? Doing pretty well. It's a warm welcome for <laughs> Athena. Thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> And so I've got a bunch of questions here, and of course, Jill's over in the studio who's going to send us any questions from our live viewers, so make sure to send those our way, and we'll ask those of our guests, but i got a few just to jump into. So Jillian, tell us, who are you, and what do you do here? <laughs> well, I'm Jillian. Um, I'm a senior here at USF. I am a mass communications major and a culture and media communications major. I'm an RA on campus. I'm over in Poplar Hall, so if you ever see me, say hi. Um, I am a director for the Emerging Leaders Institute, and I also am the new face for News in 90, which I'm sure we'll 
jump right into. So, you know, you can see me around campus. Oh, so you're not busy at all then? Mm-mm, not. Oh, okay. I, have, I have a lot of free time. Just, a really <laughs> just laying in bed most days. You know, just Netflix, well, yes. Well, think, yeah, I think everyone's pretty much addicted to Netflix. Pretty much. That. And USF Housing Live. Let's remember yes. that. Uh, so, Jillian, what was it that made you want to become a USF bull? Um, so originally USF wasn't really on my radar because I was looking for something really specific. I came um, to college wanting to play softball, um, but I en ended up finding USF through my mom, which of course she would love to hear that she is correct on things sometimes, and <laughs> she allowed me to find my lovely home here. Um, I Are we hearing that your mother was correct? Did we get that, everyone? <laughs> yeah, mom, mom, right. mom, mom knows mom best. Knows best. Okay. She, yes, so I will admit to that just once though. More than once is not okay. <laughs> yeah, but I found my home here. I took a tour and I really didn't look back after that. And so tell me a little bit more about your involvement here on campus. So you gave us a quick overview, but what are some of the things that you spend more of your time doing? So my top three things that I spend my time doing is I am an RA, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What's that stand for? Um, I'm a resident assistant here on campus. So I have worked in Poplar Hall. I've been working with LLCs and non-LLCs, so I'm really excited. Um, ironically, I am a resident assistant for the first floor this year, and that is where I actually spent my freshman year. I was a resident on the first floor oh, pod cool. of Poplar, so it's a little weird and surreal, yeah. but um, I actually love it. Um, I'm also a director for the Emerging Leaders Institute, which is a first year leadership experience for um, first year students who here at USF. So that is not just incoming freshmen. If you're a transfer, you can do that. And then News in 90 is gonna be the rest of my time. Well, how about you tell us what <laughs> News in 90 is? So News in 90 is something that we're kicking off. I get to work with you, which is just very lovely. We get to see each other all the time, <laughs> to spend extra time. Um, yeah, but so what I do is every week or so, we will do a look back at what's happened, what everyone had enjoyed and had fun at, kind of do a reflection on that and we'll look forward. Um, it's kind of have, have an opportunity to have students figure out what's going on on campus and how they can get involved and what events that they can go to. Um, we'll do small little interviews every now and again. We'll do fun little things here and there, but keep an eye out for that, I would definitely say. Very cool. I like the shameless plug. Thank you, Jillian. So <laughs> uh, News in 90 is 90 second news pieces. It's mm -hmm. going to come out on Sunday evenings. There will be 12 of them. So almost every week in the fall semester, Jillian Olson will be out there delivering the news that you care about right here <laughs> on campus. And so, Jillian, thank you so much for that. Uh, and so let's move on down the line to Mr. Thorsett over here. So, Peter, <laughs> who are you? What do you do here? <laughs> thank you, Greg. Well, I'm Peter Thorsett. Um, I am the Communications and Marketing Officer for the Career Services Office here at the University of South Florida. Um, and I'm here just to kind of coordinate what we do and telling all of our students about what happens in career services. All right, and so uh, I guess the next question is, what does happen <laughs> in career services? <laughs> so career services is the office on campus that helps our students grab their future by the horns. Um, we are here to help them essentially with everything from the beginning of their enrollment here at USF, from finding what we call a best fit major to make sure that they have identified what they want to major in and that that's gonna be good for them as they move through their academic career here at USF. We then help them as their sophomores and juniors, finding everything from internships to cooperative education opportunities and then when they're seniors we put on a lot of great events called professional you and our career fairs and help them actually find jobs for when they graduate and want to enter the workforce uh, Peter let me get this uh, uh, straight are you telling me that I don't just wait until senior year <laughs> spring and then just come into your office with my hair on fire and say save me yeah no although we are here to help our students when they get into that situation um, we prefer it when our students actually start that relationship with us early and we encourage them to begin that when they're freshmen or if they're transfer students as soon as they're here that first semester so that we can help them navigate that process it is a process is going to take their entire time here um, and it's something that we believe really strongly in that if they start that early they're going to find a lot more success when they get ready to graduate. That's cool. Yeah. Anyone in our audience want to get a job? Anyone out there? Okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> At first there were like a few hands other people were like, oh wait, I'm in college. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, yeah, I do. That, that course is so real for me. Yeah, right so, so we want to see all of them in our office next week. So. Excellent. Excellent. At one time. At one yes, at one time. That's right. All at once. <laughs> And uh, actually, we got to take a short break, but we're going to come right back uh, with our panel here. And so coming up next, we're going to show you our next installment of Cash Cart. That is USF's mobile game show. And so we're going to roll that, and we'll be right back with more panel and Housing Live after this. Welcome. I'm Stephanie, and this is Cash Cart. This is how it works. We give free rides to USF students. I'm going to ask them trivial questions along the way, and if they do well, they're going to win fabulous prizes. Let's get rolling. So, um, what's your name? 
Sarah. Sarah, I'm Stephanie. I'm the host of Cash Cart. Welcome, welcome to Cash Cart. <laughs> are you ready to play? Sure. All right. So where are we going? Um, Andros Parking Center. All right, the Andros Parking Lot back there. Cool. Which residence hall features its own dining hall? JP. JP, you're correct. It's one cart cash. How many campuses are a part of the USF system? Three. Three? That's correct. What is held outside of the MSC every Wednesday? Um, bull market. That's correct. Good job. <laughs> you're on, yeah, you're on fire. Um, How many gyms are at the USF Tampa campus? Um, three. Three, you're correct. How many floors are in the University of South Florida library? Um, six. And then left. Your final answer? Um, you know, <laughs> mm. can I call a hotline? Yeah, you can hotline. Uh, what was how it? many floors are in the lift? I'm only on the second. Seven, because there's seven. basement two. There's seven floors, you're correct. Seven so floors. One car cash. So that's five questions. How many... How many car caches do you have? I have five. You have five? That means you, congratulations, you oh. win the famous Tumblr. <laughs> so proud of Thank you. you. I've never been so proud of my friends. All right, we are back. And so we were just talking with uh, Peter Thorsett here from Career Services. And so, uh, Peter, have I asked you about Career Express? No, but we'll that's a great question, that. Greg. Thank you. Um, Career Express is our walk-in service. So many of our students require our students to call in advance and make appointments. And the reason we do that is because we match them with consultants who specialize in their major or their area of study. Um, but Career Express is unique in that we offer it both at our main office location in the Student Services Building from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Thursday. And then we offer it in the library at our job shop location in the evenings from 5 to 8. So students can just pop in. They can bring their resumes, cover letters, if they have questions about how to interview interview, what to do after an interview. That team has been trained. It's a group of our career peer advisors, which are their fellow students, and they help them actually navigate that process and then find success in the kind of job search process. And so along the lines of that job search, let's think about students that are looking for part-time employment here on campus. Is that an option for them? Absolutely. Um, in fact, one of the things that we recommend, especially for freshmen and sophomore students, is to work on campus at first. Um, it really gives them an opportunity to work with departments and programs that are here that understand that class comes first, your studies come first. Um, and so we work really strongly with those offices to kind of really flesh out those jobs and help students find success in those positions. But we also do a program now called on-campus internships. And the OCI program actually is helping us restructure many of our federal work study positions. So for students who have that as part of their financial aid package or students who identify the student employment positions to actually get more detailed and more enriching experiences in offices on campus. So we offer a number of those opportunities. Our office can help students find those, apply for those, and and then successfully land those for their freshman and sophomore years. Cool, and, and there's a lot going on in your area. I, I'm gonna take a short break from you though because I wanna say hello to Athena. And so, Athena, how are, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, um, so can you tell us a little bit about this Common Read program, what is that? Sure. So the Common Read experience here at USF, it's an initiative that's really campus-wide, um, and the idea is that all incoming students will read the same book. Um, and then they'll have experiences both inside the classroom and outside of it, so curricular and co-curricular, to really engage in a text and learn about it and learn about each other in this USF community through reading the book. And so what is the book this year? So this year, the book, it's actually a really great book. It's called The Other Wes Moore. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a book about um, two men, actually, the author Wes Moore and another man also named Wes Moore, hence The Other Wes Moore. <laughs> Um, and so the author was a Rhodes Scholar, he's a combat veteran, um, he was a White House Fellow, a very successful person, um, and then he found this other man named Wes Moore who grew up a few blocks away from him in Baltimore um, and is actually incarcerated serving a life sentence. So the book explores the different choices and then also the different environments that led to those choices that create different lives for both of them and what that looks like. And so what should students expect to learn from reading this book? I think there are a lot of really relatable experiences in this book, and so one of the things that I'm hoping that students will learn from reading this is that um, your choices can impact your life, but then also there are a lot of things that aren't in your control. So where you were born, where you grow up. Um, both of the, the characters in the book lost their fathers um, or grew up without fathers, and so um, it really looks at how those experiences shape. And so I think you know USF is such a diverse community, right? Like we have students from so many different backgrounds and so learning about 
although we are so different, how much we have in common mm -hmm. um, is something that's a really important theme in this book that I'm hoping students will learn. And so how is that going to tie into their class experience here on campus? That's a great question. So um, specifically in the academic foundation classes that a lot of first year students will take, as well as first year composition, so that first English composition course on campus, faculty have been infusing the text into their syllabi. So students will be um, working on different projects, exploring the text through those two classes. And then other faculty are encouraged to, encouraged to do so as well. So whether you're in an academic foundations or not, faculty members will be um, adding that book to how they look at their classes from multiple disciplines. The idea is that no matter your major, whether you're chemistry, engineering, English, creative writing, that you can engage in and learn something from the text. That's very cool. And I'd like to take some more time to talk about it. We just yeah. got to take another short break, okay? All right. So let's take a little break. Uh, actually, uh, we're going to uh, take another visit over to Peter's Stomping Grounds and Career <laughs> Services. So we've got an overview video to share with you all. So again, if you have any questions while you're watching that, feel free to type those in the chat. They'll send them to you right here. And so we got more Housing Live coming your way. My Plan, My Pathways is a program designed to help you explore different majors if you don't already have one. This amazing program starts when you start at USF during the orientation registration process. Hopefully you received a welcome email from My Plan, My Pathways and completed the two career assessments. If not, don't worry, there's still time to do so. Just contact our office for help. And once you've completed the assessments, keep an eye on your USF email account for personal invitations to career services, events, and programs for your area of interest. There's a lot available to you, so be sure and take advantage of them. Career Express is our office's walk-in service where there's no appointment needed. At Career Express, you'll work with other USF students, like me, who have been trained to help you prepare or critique your resume and cover letter. We're also here to help you with interviewing tips and techniques to help you land that perfect internship, co-op, part-time, or full-time job. Another one of the services our office can help students with is in identifying and applying for internship opportunities. There are currently a wide variety of both on-campus and off-campus internship programs our office can assist you with. We offer support to find opportunities in a range from settings from local nonprofit organizations to corporate placements around the world. Career Services provides you with a lot of opportunities to meet with employers at a variety of events. Our professional youth series will help you improve your networking skills or learn what employers are looking for when they hire. Our Careers in Coffee, Information Session, and Employer Spotlight programs let you meet our employers in less formal settings to learn about their organizations and the positions that USF students and graduates can apply for. Employable Powered by Handshake is our all-new career management website. Launching during the summer of 2016, Handshake will allow USF students to be able to search for internships, co-op positions, part-time and full-time positions available with our employers. To get started using Handshake, you will need to upload your resume and complete your profile. This allows the system to help you find jobs that match your skills, interests, and qualifications. Borrow a suit and own your interview. The Suitable Service is an awesome partnership between Career Services and the student organization Enactus at USF. Students who don't own business or professional clothes can stop by during the semester and borrow clothing items for up to 48 hours for interviews, career fairs, and other job-related events. All right, all right. We are back, everyone. And so we were just talking with Athena Bresic about the Common Read program. And so we're talking about how they engage in their classes, but what is it overall? What is the overall benefit to the community by reading this book? So I think one of the, the, you know, the overall benefit to engaging with the common read experience and reading the same text is that then the USF community is having a common intellectual intellectual experience. Um, and so it's something that really bridges the gap. So USF is a really big community. And so this is one way to shrink USF and to really connect with your peers um, and think about things through a common lens, right? And so um, this also aligns with some of the university goals. And so the university is looking to engage in global to conversation and so this text really looks at some of those issues. Um, the book was selected in part because of some of the things that go on in the news and things that are happening and affecting our world um, and it explores some relationships between poverty and crime and some of those pieces. And so I think as students are getting engaged in their careers and getting involved, this is a way for them to look at things differently and to, um, to really learn from each other through reading it. So, yeah. And so the big question now is mm -hmm. where do students go to get a copy? 
There, that's a great question. So there are going to be a few copies um, available at the library. I believe they're, um, the Summer B students are already using those. And so mm -hmm. if you get to the library and they're all checked out, you can actually place a hold on the text so that you can be the next student in line to get that. So you want to check on that. Um, and then well, that's also, easy. They just have to, OK, it used yeah. to be arm um, wrestling for the right, last Right, yeah. Copy, there won't so. be any like I'm you know, glad that we formalized fights. that yeah. a bit. Yeah. So just like click on hold button, and then you can be, they'll alert you when you're the next in line. Um, and then they're also sold in the campus bookstore. So they're right on the first floor by the registers. Huge table full of books. Um, so they'll be able to get them when they arrive to campus. So is there no reason to freak out if you don't pre-order no the book? No freaking out. You can pre-order it if you want. I mean, I encourage you to get started over the summer um, so that you have some time to get through it. Plus, it's an enjoyable read. So, um, But yeah, they'll be able to get it on campus. Awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, I want to switch gears here a little sure. bit. We were just looking at the Career Services overview video. And there is uh, something that I'm aware of called My Plan, My Pathways program. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't touched base on that. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit, Peter? Sure. So one of the things that all of our freshmen should be doing as part of their pre-registration for orientation process is the My Plan, My Pathways program. And that goes to that best fit major selection process. That program will enable students to take a personality inventory and a career interest assessment. And together, those help our office help students understand what opportunities are available to them. So if a student tests really high, say, in the health professions field, and we have a company like WellCare coming on campus, we can match those up mm -hmm. and help students know about opportunities that are specific to their major and specific to their interests instead of sending out kind of those big broadcast general <laughs> emails that we used to do to all 45,000 students here at USF. All right, very cool. Um, so internships. Mm -hmm. Very important. Tell us about internships. How does it very work? Important. How do I get one? Very important. So we encourage students, as I, as I alluded to a little bit in our last segment, there's now the on-campus internship program for freshmen um, and sophomores, which would allow students to pursue internships on campus. Our office also has programs called Interns with Impact, which allow students to get out and work for nonprofit agencies and government agencies here in the Tampa Bay region. And then we also work with the different colleges and departments for internships that offer uh, course credit or for non-credit options that supplement their learning in the classroom. Those are all really easy to get. They can do that through our online system, uh, Employable Powered by Handshake, or they can use that um, with their different department's uh, mailing lists. So how much do all these services cost you've been talking about with us? So they are all free. That is a great question. So <laughs> students can use any of these services um, all the way through their academic career. And we actually, uh, under the leadership of our new uh, Assistant Vice President, Russ Kokenauer, we now offer many of these services for free to alumni for life. Once a bowl, awesome. always a bowl, is now his philosophy. So. That's awesome. So Jillian, you need to get over that. I That's know. Right. <laughs> I was telling him, I was like, listen, I'm definitely coming to see you because the job force is real. I'm mm -hmm. about to graduate. All right. And you want to get that job. You want to get yeah, off on the right absolutely. foot there. So definitely get you into career services there. Um, actually, something I wanted to ask you, Jillian, is now that you've been here for a few years, you're a seasoned USF Bull. Ooh. If you could hop <laughs> in the time machine and go back and talk to freshman Jillian, what's some advice you would give yourself? Freshman Jillian, I would tell her just like relax and just try new things, do something different. Because I came from, I actually came from just moving from New Jersey when I came to Florida, so I was completely uprooted. So I didn't have like that friend group almost to kind of, I don't know, support me. And so I was a little lost when I first got to campus and I decided to finally put myself out there eventually. And I found the Emerging Leaders Institute and that has carried me through as well. But just going for those things, making friends, just talking to anyone. People don't bite usually, so like, you know. Usually. Yeah, usually is the, is the key word. But so it's just like, <laughs> just, Make those connections because they'll last you a pretty long time. Excellent. Well, that's very good advice. That's Thank excellent. You. <laughs> and we wish you uh, plenty of luck in the future. It sounds thank like you're having you. a great experience thus far. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and so uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to the program. Let's hear it for Jillian Olson, Peter Thorsett, and Athena Bressak. <laughs> thank, thank you. Good job. Good job. We really appreciate a panel. we got another panel coming up uh, right after this. Uh, we're going to be talking with Diane Zanto from Student Health Services and Dave Kloiber from Housing and Residential Education. But first, the time has come for the trilogy to be shown of our Bull Hall Train cartoon. There have been two parts we've shown in the two prior episodes of USF Housing Live. And a lot of you probably watched it in the group thinking, what the heck is this? Well, we're going to show you the whole trilogy right now, all about the Bull Hall Train. And we'll be right back with our next panel. More USF Housing Live coming right at you after this.
Do you want to take a ride on the bull hall train? Um, what? It's one of the most incredible adventures USF has to offer. I'm Nicolina, the conductor of the bull hall train, and this is Jellybug, my second in command. Okay. Do you know what a train is? Yes, but I don't quite understand. Just come with us. We will show you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. We have a new passenger. Everyone, this is Sandiana. Sandiana, meet Jack, Sierra, Kevin, and Dr. Rick Saltzman, and his cat, Jay Kitty. It's so nice to meet all of you. So, how long is this trip going to take? Should only be a few hours. We'll be coming up to the big drawbridge over the river soon. We might even see the narwhals. Wow, I can see the bridge up ahead! <gasps> what happened? <laughs> Meow. We're not gonna make it! How did that happen? Everyone, stay calm. Someone must have tampered with the train. We have to find out what happened. Jillybug, bring Kevin and Sierra to get in touch with the engineers. Jack, go out and see if the wheels are busted. I need to contact USF. What should I do? Stay right there and don't touch anything. What happened? What are you doing over there? Um, the train just started. I don't know. I didn't touch anything. Well, we've got to get moving if we want to make it before the bridge is drawn. We don't want to end up in a narwhal cabal. What's a narwhal? I didn't know you were British. Huh, <laughs> I didn't know either. Cheerio! <laughs> Are we on schedule to make it to the bridge in time? Yep, and we have 7,335.7 seconds until we get to USF. Approximately two hours. Urgh, they figured out my plan. I am going to get this meddling little girl. I am still going to pull this off no matter what. <laughs> yeah, let's party! Wait a second. Where is Dr. Saltzman? Have you seen Dr. Saltzman? He was just here asking about where the engine is. I thought he wanted to make sure nothing bad happened. Nicolina, stop the train when I give you the sign. What sign? You'll know. I knew it was you the whole time! You stopped the train, unplugged the wires, and pulled the party lever! You thought it was an emergency brake. Meddling little girl, you foiled my whole plan. But how did you know? Ugh, I knew I shouldn't have brought him here. Meow. 
But why? Why did you do this? I just wanted to take a photo of the narwhals for my narwhal photography collection. This is more important than Bull Hall. Oh, really? That's so sweet. Of course not, you stupid little bug. No one helped me move in when I was in college. You kids don't deserve it. I'm sorry, but we can't miss Bull Hall. I am not going to let it happen. Go Bulls! How did you know? Here. Thank you. You've proved yourself to be brave and smart. You deserve to be a bull. everyone welcome welcome okay settle down okay so we are back this is USF housing live for those of you who are new here my name is Gregory Bowers and I work with housing and residential education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa by the way we are home to the finest beach in Florida it's called Castor Beach right here on campus okay <laughs> Just don't go swimming in any body of water in Florida. Why are they laughing at that? What are you talking about? It's a huge international beach, right? Yeah, I don't really know. Okay, so uh, joining us today, let's hear it. This is Mr. Dave Kloiber from Housing and Residential Education. Dave Kloiber, everyone. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Greg. Good to be back. Dave is a compendium of all housing knowledge. He's in charge of the assignments process, so it's great to learn how his operation works. I think it's just like a lever. He just pulls it and you live somewhere, right, Dave? Almost. Yeah, we're okay, excellent. So, also joining us is the Director of Student <coughs> Health Services, Diane Zanto. Diane, welcome to the program. Great to be here, Greg. Great to be here. Happy to have you. Uh, and so, I have got quite a number of questions for you. And also, for those of you watching us on YouTube, make sure to send in your live questions in the chat. And I'll be happy to ask some of our experts here. So, Diane, is it okay if we jump in to start with you? Sure can. So, who are you and what do you do here? Well, my name is Diane Zanto, and I'm the Director of Student Health. And Student Health is basically your medical clinic on campus. We not only provide medical care, but we do insurance compliance, and we do immunization compliance, and we have a full-service pharmacy. And so let's uh, talk about some more of those services. Let's say a student gets sick. So where do they go, and what's the cost associated with getting those services? Well, any student that's registered for any classes on campus is eligible to use our services. And you basically pay for the care in, the, in terms of your tuition when you pay for your health fee. So we don't have any out-of-pocket costs for medical appointments. So if you have insurance, we do bill insurance. We tell you, carry your insurance card. You'll be asked for it when you come in, and we will bill your insurance, but you will not be responsible for co-pays or deductibles. If you don't have insurance, we'll still see you as a student, but there might be some very minimal charges for specialty services, but not for basic medical care. And we provide everything from primary care, such as physicals and seeing you for your sinus infections or for a sprain or a strain or a rash, all the way to nutrition and dermatology, psychiatry services. Um, this year, for the first time, we're doing neuropsychology, which is the evaluation of learning disabilities and ADHD. So there's a wide range of services that we provide at Student Health. And so what hours are, uh, is the Student Health Services building open? Student Health is open from 8 to 5.30 during the fall and spring semesters, and during the breaks and summer session, we're open from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And where is Student Health located? We're right central to campus, very convenient location, directly east of the bookstore. 
And so uh, just, I think you mentioned this, but Student Health Services does not require health insurance for a student to go there? No, you do, we do encourage everybody to have health insurance because unexpected emergencies come up that can really end up costing you a lot of money if, you, if you're not covered. But that would not prohibit you from using our services. Basically, without insurance, um, you might have, like I say, some very, very minimal charges, 10 or $20 for a specialty care service, but no out-of-pocket costs for a regular medical appointment. All right, and you said students can uh, actually get prescriptions filled on campus? Yes, they can. We do have a Bulls Country Pharmacy. It is right in Marshall Student Center, and anyone that is registered or staff and as well can use the pharmacy there. Um, you can uh, have your prescriptions from your hometown transferred into that pharmacy. You can choose to have your prescriptions from home transferred to a community pharmacy as well. So when we write you a prescription at Student Health, you really choose where you want to go. But do keep in mind that Bulls Country Pharmacy has pricing that is very, very minimal because we really don't upcharge from our costs so that we can make it as affordable as possible for all students. That's excellent. And what about students looking to get an allergy shot? Is that something that you provide? Yes, we do provide allergy shots. What we need you to do is bring your doctor's order and bring your serum. Um, and then you'll be set up with an appointment with our immunization nurse, and we'll keep the serum there and um, communicate with your allergist about what the dosage should be for the shots. And so as far as accessing services, is there any difference if someone is a minor? If someone is a minor, we do require parental consent. There are some exceptions to parental consent. If there's a true medical emergency, if there's a sexual health need or a contraceptive need, um, signature is not required. But for everything else, we do require a signature from your parent for consent. And we'll assist you in getting that consent if you're underage when you come in to see us. Great. Thank you for sharing that. And so good job, Dave, so far. You're batting a 1,000. I am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're going to have uh, more time with Diane and Dave, but we do have to take a short break. And we're actually going to be rolling a clip here that's an overview of Student Health Services. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. More Yosef Housing Lives coming your way. Right after this. Student Health Services is a doctor's office away from home, so anyone can come here. Student Health Services is your on-campus medical facility. Uh, we have comprehensive services for sexual health and gynecology, uh, for general medical care, we have urgent care services, as well as we also have psychiatric services available. Financially, you can always have a medical evaluation with no cost attached to it. The students don't pay to see a doctor or a nurse, so basically that's included in their tuition. They pay what, what is called a health fee. We typically see about a, between 100 and 150 students per day. When they come in, they will be asked to sign in and they will be asked to fill out a number of forms. Um, nursing will call them back and do some basic screening, so they'll take their temperature and pulse and um, their blood pressure and the physician or nurse practitioner or physician assistant comes in and does the exam and talks with the, uh, with the student about what their impressions were, what they think the student can do to stay healthy. Now they can choose to go to their own pharmacy um, or they can choose to go to our on-campus pharmacy which is Bulls Country Pharmacy. Biggest pieces of information that I can give to students who are coming to USF for the first time is to make sure that they're vaccinated for all sorts of infections. Um, the most common ones is to be in fact, is to be vaccinated for is measles, mumps, rubella, uh, in addition to chicken pox, as well as me meningitis. Our providers are really very special providers. We chose to work in a college environment because we know that it's a very unique facility to provide medical services. We all are like a family here at Student Health, and we just love helping people. We're, we're the best at what we do, taking care of college-age students. Come on down, we'll take great care of you. Um, just come on in, walk in, make an appointment. You can call and make an appointment, what have you. Everyone will greet you with open arms, um, just like if you were at home. All right, we are back. All right, hearing those kernels pop out there. All right, welcome back. What's my name? Um, Gregory Bowers, and it's normally down there. I'd always read it. Oh, there it is. There, Gregory Bowers, and I'm your host. And we're talking with some excellent uh, folks over here, Diane Zanto and Dave Kloiber. Diane, we were just talking about student health services. I want to keep that going a little bit and switch gears into health insurance. And so what are the health insurance requirements for international students? Okay. International students are required to prove that they have a minimum amount of insurance as per our regulation. 
Now, the specifics about the regulation are not some, it's too detailed to go into on the show, but all they need to do is go to our website at um, Student Health and click on the insurance tab and the regulation is there. And it basically requires them to have basic benefits. So at 80% for in-network and 60% out of network and then some other minimums. And if they have questions about the coverage requirements, just call Student Health Insurance Office and they'll help you um, get through the process and decide what, what one will qualify for our standards. Do you happen to know what a general range of, uh, of student health insurance would cost? Well, if you purchase our student health insurance that we sponsor, that plan is about $2,000 a year. But there's the choices that are out there. They don't have to use our insurance plan. There are other ones that will meet the minimums. And the cost can be less if there's less coverage or, or up to about the $2,000 figure. Now, keep in mind, if you find a policy that's quite a bit cheaper, know that your coverage is going to be quite a bit less. And for some students, that comes as a shock as to how much they're going to have to pay out of pocket. So if you have questions, we really advise you to consult with one of our staff members. Okay. And uh, does USF Student Health Insurance cover immunizations for students? Yes, it does. Fully covers the immunizations. All right. Excellent. Um, so let's say someone has an insurance hold on Oasis. How mm -hmm. do they go about getting that removed? Well, they need to show proof that they have had that they have their insurance and they need to submit that insurance policy either through the portal, through the admissions portal, or they can submit it online, um, by email, by fax, or they can br bring it in person to the insurance office. All right, great. And so speaking of holds and holdups, let's go over to Dave Kloiber. And so immunizations is something that can hold students up, but I understand there was a change. Can you both take us through what change as far as immunization requirements and living on campus? Do you want to or you want me to? Well, I'll start and you can finish. Okay. How about that? <laughs> Basically, we did have a hold for students, or there was a requirement that to live in housing, they needed to have a meningitis vaccine. That hold has been removed. Um, the Board of Governors has determined that we will no longer have that requirement, but we do require that they sign a waiver saying that they've been educated about the um, health benefits of having the immunization vaccine, but they do not need to have the meningitis to be admitted sure. into housing. And uh, this has caused some delays with our assignment process because it is a new policy mm -hmm. as of Just changed. six weeks ago. Right. Uh, so it happened Brand right new. in the middle of our application mm -hmm. process. But um, as Diane, I'm sure, would echo, uh, we do encourage all of our students to still get that, uh, that vaccine. And same thing for our hepatitis B vaccine uh, because you want to be safe and not have to worry about uh, having a higher chance of getting uh, ill from one of those diseases. And so from what I'm hearing, though it's not a requirement, it's still important. Oh yes, very important. <laughs> Absolutely, especially when you're going to be living on campus with a whole a group of students, that's when the risk for meningitis is at its greatest. So, and, and meningitis is a deadly disease, and it quickly turns deadly, so we really encourage um, students to have that vaccination before they come to campus. Well, I thank you both for sharing that with us. Um, and this is something I'm aware of and have actually seen this personally with people that I've known from my time in college. So I know just how serious it is. And what I want everyone to understand, we do keep it light here on USF Housing Live, but I want you to know that uh, getting your, your immunizations is very important because it is about your health and well-being. And so we included an additional message from Dr. Puccio in the credits tonight. And so make sure you, once you're, you've seen the whole show, stick around, watch the credits. We have an important message for you from Student Health Services. You want to make sure you check that out. And so. Uh, another question for Dave over here. I get this question about every 14 and a half <laughs> seconds, and that is, I have completed my housing application steps, but I don't have a housing assignment. So when am I getting my housing assignment, Dave? Sure. We, uh, we did a, another small round of assignments last week. We were able to assign about 240, 245 students, and uh, we, do look, we are looking to do another much larger round of assignments come about a week and a half from now, around the 19th or 20th of July. And uh, on that date, we would incur, we, we expect to be able to assign about another eight or 900 more. Okay, great. And so does that mean that we're not full yet? Obviously, we're not full if we can. Okay, I get that question a lot too. People are freaking out. People don't need to freak out at this point about getting a space. No, so. uh, no they should not freak out. Um, if we get to the point where we're going to be full, we'll notify you. We'll give you as much notice as, as we have. And um, please note that we still are getting cancellations as well. So we could have gotten one during the show, actually, because our cancellation process is done online, as most of our forms are. 
Okay, great. And so what I'm hearing from Dave is get out there and apply still. Make sure you complete yep. your four housing application steps. Go to usf.edu slash housing. Click on housing application up top. And then for those of you watching, probably first year students, and they can take care of that. So sure. that's great. Are there certain areas, because uh, students also preference on their housing application where they want to live. And so we've been assigning students now since mid-May. I'm wondering if there are certain areas that maybe don't want to be the top priority or I know some students select the same exact building for every preference. And so do you have any guidance for us? Dave? Yeah, um, obviously our, our newer buildings are our more popular buildings. Juniper Poplar being the most popular building on campus. Um, and so, uh, I mean, you can certainly make it your top choice because, hey, someone might have just canceled and it's your turn to be assigned. But um, please don't put all your eggs in that basket because when your preferences run out, what our computer system does is it'll try to put you in the least expensive option that remains. And so uh, a lot of our students end up in a, in a building that maybe they haven't thought they'd even ever want to live in. Okay, well, thank you, Dave. Uh, I think it is time for one more break, but we do have plenty of time left for more questions with Dave and Diane here. And so coming up next is our next installment of Jillybug. That's right, everyone's favorite space alien that somehow is admitted to USF. We're going to see more about her journey, and then we've got a whole bunch more show coming your way right after this. <laughs> for our next episode where Jillybug learns about Yik Yak. Why is everyone complaining? Gross. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Yik Yak is a very scary place, I will admit that. Uh, so uh, my name is Gregory Bowers with Housing Residential Education. We're talking with Diane Zanto and Dave Kloiber a little bit about assignments and student health services here. And so, uh, Diane, I got some more questions for you uh, in the immunizations area. And so some students may have not completed anything with immunizations yet. And so basically, uh, is there a form they need to complete and where do they do that? Yes, there is a form that they have to complete. It is available on the admissions portal and that's where we advise them to complete it. You basically have to have show evidence that you've had two doses of MMR, which is measles, mumps, and rubella, and there's some specific time requirements in terms of when you have to have those. And then you have to sign a waiver for hepatitis B or show evidence that you've received three doses of hepatitis B. And if you are living in housing, you have to show declination of a waiver or show evidence that you've completed the meningitis vaccine. Now, if they find that there is a hold on their account, they again can check online, they can check their OASIS account, they can check or call the immunization office to see if they've been cleared from that hold. Or if they need assistance, just call our immunization office and we'll assist them. Excellent. Uh, and so uh, how can they submit their records? Directly through the admissions portal. That's the easiest, fastest way for them to do that. But again, they can email it, they can fax it, they can come into the office in person and deliver those reports. Sometimes their records are actually right on the Florida system, uh, Florida records, Florida shots it's called, and we'll be able to help them get them off of that site. So there's a variety of ways that you can get that requirement met. Excellent. So that information to contact you is on your website. It is, I believe, 
usf.edu slash shs. Am I correct? That's it. All right, excellent. You'll find us. Uh, and so I got a question here for Dave. Uh, we, we get questions sometimes about uh, medical accommodations or a, a student with a disability mm -hmm. wondering how they can get additional support. And let's say they have some documentation to file with housing regarding an accommodation. Where does that process begin? Where does a student go to get that started? Well, to begin with, your, the student would go onto our housing portal where all of our forms are located and submit a what we call an ADA medical accommodations request based on the term that they're applying for. And so we have one for the fall spring, we have one for summer B, for summer A, and so on. And so they would complete that form. It has enough, enough space to put in some basic information and then they'll receive a response, an automated response saying this is your ticket number. If they have additional documentation they need to provide, they can uh, then use that ticket number to provide us that documentation via email. And that information is all through the USF email, so they're going to get that communication? Correct. Yeah, all of, our, all of our communication between the student and uh, our system is on the USF email account. Okay, excellent. So everyone knows, make sure you check your USF email every eight minutes, right? Well, the closer we get, five or six might be better. Okay, five or six minutes all the time. Be checking your USF email so you are up to date. Excellent. Of course, everyone knows, keep checking in the USF class of 2020 Facebook group. With lots of great information in there for you. Dave Kloiber is even in there, so they can ask Dave a question. Keep him awake. Don't let the man sleep. Keep those questions coming. And so uh, another thing I'd like to know about is we have a lot of parents who are watching the show. And so you each represent two different areas. And so, uh, Dave, I'd like to start with you. Parents are getting ready for that fall move-in. It's about a month away, coming up on August 18th, and so the nest might be a little emptier. The student is transitioning from high school to college. What's some advice you have for parents to help them successfully navigate that transition? Um, I'm a parent myself, and my, student, my kids aren't quite there for college yet. But uh, in my experience, the biggest thing you can do for your student is try to let them do things on their own. Um, keep an eye out for what they're doing, but um, don't do it all for them because really this is their time to really start their process of becoming more and more independent. And so uh, by having them do their own forms, asking them what forms have you done, um, but not going on to getting their, their passwords and logging in and doing everything for them because they're not going to be learning what they need to do once they graduate here from USF. That's really good advice. I wish someone had told my parents <laughs> that actually, because my mom physically filled out my housing or my my application to go to college, and she, she has excellent penmanship. I do not. I almost didn't get out of the third grade because of my penmanship. But thank goodness computers were invented. So there's that. So I don't think I've ever seen you write with a pen. Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's it's really it's an ugly show, and no one should have to ever see that. Okay, so, um, that's excellent advice. So uh, Diane, let's let's ask you. And so. This is not something that's always in the priority, the forefront of minds of our students, and we have that invincibility thought, right? When we come to college, exactly. we think we're going to be perfectly fine, but what are some things that you think parents should be thinking about as far as the health and well-being of their student as they transition to college? Okay, there's some things that they can do to help their student prepare to come in the fall. Number one, they can send them with a basic a first aid kind of kit. Remember, their medicine cabinet is not going to be available in their residence hall room, so they're going to need things like ibuprofen and Tylenol and Band-Aids and those simple kinds of things that they should stock in case they have something that they need after hours or after stores are closed. In addition, if they have any kind of chronic illness, they should bring along a copy of their medical record to campus so that we can transition and coordinate their care with their at-home doctors. Uh, they do need to bring know what their immunizations were and like when their last tetanus shot was because if they get any kind of scratch or cut, the first question we're going to say is, when did you get your last tetanus shot? And most of them are not going to know that and have to get another one, which no one wants an extra shot if they don't need it, that kind of thing. Um, but basically, if they can, again, echoing on Dave's words, uh, let them be a little bit more independent with their medical decisions as they near the time that they're going to come to college. They should always carry a copy of their health insurance card because we don't know when medical emergencies are going to happen and making them responsible, more responsible for their own health care needs. Thank you. That is very good advice. And just to echo that, make sure you have your health insurance card on you at all times, right? Exactly. Definitely. And so uh, you never want something bad to happen, but if something did, we want to make sure that information is on your person. So uh, very good advice there. Any, any final parting words you'd like to share with our viewers? 
just good luck to all those students uh, in preparation of coming here. They're going to find it's a wonderful place and that we care and come to see us at any time because we're here to help them. Great. Thank you, Diane. We look forward to the students' arrival and for the parents out there who are going to be uh, bringing their students to campus, grand opening is August 18th. And we'll have some wonderful people from uh, Bull Hall. <laughs> I looked up because thunder if, just rang out. I don't know if they can hear that at home. Yeah, <laughs> Dave said that, that the fall grand opening is coming, and then a big thunder clap just went overhead. And so, um, I'm sorry, you were saying, Zeus? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, Apollo. No. Um, oh, is that Apollo? Did I get the no, wrong? You got it right. Okay. Zeus is Thunderbolts, yes. Oh, okay. I work in uh, marketing. I could barely read, honestly. So it's really <laughs> just, you know. But uh, you do want to be prepared for the, for the weather on the 18th or any day that your student moves in here at USF because uh, it will, will be hot, it will be wet, and most of the time it will be both. And so uh, we want you to be prepared and always have an umbrella. That's true. The umbrella is <laughs> probably one of the best tips of advice for folks because people are out there always surprised in the summertime. It's four o'clock in the afternoon and the heavens have opened up on me. Well, yeah, it's Florida, so yep. definitely bring an umbrella. Um, so let's hear it for Dave Kloiber, Diane Zanto. Thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. Really awesome to have you here. Uh, and we have some more information coming your way as well as our big winner of our $100 gift card. So. Coming up next, we're going to show you a little overview of Kosovo Apartments, a really great option for all students to live on campus, a great location, and our next installment of Nicolina for Your Thoughts. We're going to roll that. More Housing Live coming your way right after this. Kosovo Apartments houses approximately 254 residents and offers a mix of options. Every apartment has a kitchenette with an oven, stove, and refrigerator. The apartments in Kosovo feature varied floor plans, each with the same amenities. Featuring single and double bedroom apartments, this unique hall houses two to five residents per unit who share a bathroom. Kosovo is located right next door to the Fresh Food Company Dining Hall, right across the lawn from Castor, and only a short walk to the Marshall Student Center, right in the heart of Argos. Laundry facilities are conveniently located on the first floor. thoughts, we're going to go over a few simple tips that can prove quite useful for navigating your way through your time here at USF. Sidewalk rules. Simple? You'd be surprised. Sidewalk rules tend to trip up a lot of people here, so today we're going to clear up some of those misconceptions. Number one, walking. Walking is something that the majority of our students choose to do. It's not always the quickest option, but it's simple. You don't have to carry anything with you, and because of that, it's free. Something that most college students like. When it comes to the rules of walking, it's pretty simple. All other methods of transport must yield to walkers. Longboards are a really quick and popular way to get around campus here at USF. However, be careful when riding them because a lot of students tend to end up at student health services for longboard accidents. And they also do have a drawback. When you get to class, you have to find a place to put your longboard. And unlike things such as bikes, there are no longboard racks, which can prove to be quite a hassle in a big, large lecture hall. Bikes, for many of us, have been around since our childhoods, but unfortunately, it seems like we're still a bit fuzzy on the rules. Well, with bike racks around every building, including all of the residence halls, bikes have a place to be parked, unlike longboards. They're also the quickest method of transportation. Bikes must yield to both longboarders and walkers. Bikes and longboards should be walked across the sidewalk, not ridden. When a bike or a longboard is coming up to a pedestrian, they normally say something like, to your left or to your right, so the pedestrian knows where to go in case they choose to yield to the bike or the longboard. But remember, they don't have to. So now, if you're considering buying yourself a longboard or a bike for when you get to campus, consider joining our Bulls Online Marketplace. It's a Facebook page, and it's pretty cool. On this Facebook page, you can buy all of your old Pierce stuff, and you can get a great deal on the stuff that you're looking for. So now that you know, hopefully you'll be prepared to safely ride down the sidewalk into the sunset during your days at USF. All right, all right, all right.
So welcome everyone. Now this is a special moment because we happen to have a few of these gift cards. $100 to b &H Photo Video. It's where we actually get all of our equipment here and they were kind enough to send us a few of these gift cards. And we're going to announce the winner now. It's one lucky audience member. And so let's go ahead and cut to the audience and see if our winner is out there. And here we go. Drum roll please. If your name is Serena, you have won. Serena, is there Serena in the audience? All right. Where's, where's Serena? Is Serena back there? Okay. So we'll find you in a moment. We'll get you your winning gift card there. And so uh, thank you everyone for joining us for USF Housing Live. Again, my name is Gregory Bowers with Housing Residential Education. We are the best place to live, the best place to work, and the best place to learn. Special thank you to our crew. And remember, we get a special message for you in the credits tonight. Make sure you join us. The season finale is going to be on Sunday, August 7th at 7 p.m. right here at youtube.com slash USF Housing. Always a great time doing this, but you know what? I'm forgetting. There's just one last thing. Go Bulls! Go Bulls! Good night, everyone. On behalf of the staff of Student Health Services, I would like to welcome you to the University of South Florida. USF has recently changed its policy regarding immunizations. It is no longer required for USF campus residents to receive the meningitis vaccination. Although it is no longer a requirement, we still highly encourage students to protect themselves and get vaccinated. Meningococcal disease is a serious bacterial illness. It could lead to meningitis, which is an infection of the lining of the brain and spinal cord, which could lead to serious neurological damage and even death. According to the National Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, adolescents and young adults ages 16 through 23 years of age are at increased risk of getting meningococcal disease. The disease can spread from person to person through close contact or lengthy contact, especially among people living in the same household. The USF system has over 45,000 students that are in contact with each other every day and some students will be living with one another for long periods of time. It is important that students living on campus and off campus protect themselves with the two meningococcal vaccines and protect others by getting vaccinated before they come to school at USF or within the first 50 days of the semester.